Now, one of the key understandings of digital systems is that we have to get information into the computer some way. These are called inputs. So we have to give the computer some information. Now, there are some common ways of doing that through a keyboard, or through a mouse, or a touch screen, but there are other processes as well. Now, one of the ones you've already explored is the Makey Makey kits, where you can create your own digital inputs or input devices. It might be things students hit or um, essentially creating a circuit that then sends a signal to the computer that something is being inputted, either a key, a certain key from a keyboard or a mouse movement or an upward or downward arrow, but some form of input that the computer can then interpret and do things with. Now, the Makey Makey kits are the simplest form of that, but there are other kits um, that are available that students can utilize that can do some more complex things. Some of them have their own little um, outputs, such as lights or sound effects, so that you can have it, instead of having to connect it to a computer, you can have various inputs cause some changes on the little device itself. Um, the code bug is a popular one in schools, and the Adafruit um, circles is another one, which are often um, sewn into clothing to make digital clothes. But these devices allow students to connect up like they do to the Makey Makey and have various things happen when different circuits are closed or buttons are pressed, etc. Now, beyond that, we have more complex little microcomputers. Now, they're not quite fully computers yet. They're what we call microcontroller boards. They can perform specific instructions so when something happens, something else then happens. Um, whereas a computer has a program running on it, where we write the program, and the program is then listening for various things, such as keyboard presses or mouse clicks and so forth, and then it does things. But a microcontroller, just like with the Makey Makey, when certain things happen, certain other specific things then happen, such as a light turns on or a a buzzer happens, um, etc. Now, there are a range of what are called Adreno microcontroller boards. These are very cheap little microcontroller boards, but they have lots and lots of sensors and other devices that we can attach to them, such as a tilt sensor. When it's tilted, it will then send a signal and then we can have something happen. Or it might be if a vibration is detected, so we can make an alarm system. Or if a light is detected, so we can tell if a light is turned on, or if it's daylight or nighttime. So we could make some sort of alarm system. Um, and there's other senses like tilting and infrared and temperature and humidity and heartbeats. So all of these things now allow us to make solutions to problems, such as a device that's detecting our heartbeat and has a buzzer go off if our heartbeat rises over a certain value. So again, it doesn't need a complex program to do that. It just needs a simple set of what we call a script so that if this, then that. So if the heart rate value is higher than this, then the buzzer activates. Simple little program that allows these devices to solve problems. So think about how you might be able to create a solution to a problem using these devices. Now, commonly we can add, have what are called add-ons to these, which might allow us to attach wheels so they, or motors, which then we can put wheels on so it can then make a little robot. So we can have the wheels turn on and off. Or we could have things for data logging. So it might be that it um, records the temperature every five minutes and stores that onto a little card, a memory card. So we can have then a temperature sensor so we can create a little weather station. Um, and lots of other possible devices and solutions to these. So have a look at some of the different uh, possibilities and think about the sorts of activities you could have in your classroom where students are solving problems by using their access to these tools. Now, some of these, like the Adreno boards and the little sensors, um, require some complexity. Either they have to fit into tiny little holes or ideally they're soldered. Now, soldering and primary school students doesn't go too well together. Even hot glue guns is a bit of a um, stretch for use of younger primary kids. So there are kits that have been developed that don't require any soldering and make the connection making much easier. 
So some of these use magnets, so they just clip them together. Um, others allow you to actually use what is called conductive ink, which is ink that has got lots of metal in it so that it will transmit a signal. So we can actually draw circuits and connections and so forth. And we can then put little switches between our drawn lines and connect up circuits and have various things happen. So these are much more friendly for younger children to be able to work with. Now the other type of kit we have are what are called microcomputers. So these are a step up from the microcontrollers. These are actually computers that have their own operating system. So it's not as complex as Windows or the Macintosh operating systems and so forth on Apple devices, but it is still a really tiny, simple operating system, which allows it to run programs and save data and, and a whole range of other things that we are familiar with, with more complex operating systems. But they can be still very low cost. Now, the micro bit is the most common of these. Um, every student in year seven in the UK is given one of these. Uh, by the British Broadcasting Commission, like the ABC in Australia, um, because they want to see students learn about how to do things with computers. And with these, they can actually attach the little board up to a TV and to a keyboard and to a mouse and use it as a computer or as a server for running a Minecraft server so that other students can connect up their computers and uh, play together on a Minecraft game. So they can do very powerful things with very low cost, simple computing devices. It also has a whole series of little LEDs on it and a little microphone and speaker. So you can have, you can program it to do very simple little games and activities. It's got a couple of buttons. So you can have those, you can have, move a little, move the lights left and right as though know, they're a spaceship and you can have other lights coming down like a Space Invaders game. Really simple little games, but well within the capabilities of primary school students to come up with and program and device their own. And we'll be looking at microbits in more detail next week. Now, the final stage in terms of these types of devices is little microcomputer kits where you get all the components for making a laptop. Now, a very simple laptop again, running these sort of microcontroller boards and so forth. But students can learn how laptops and computers work by building their own and putting them together um, in terms of these pieces that they can combine and learn about digital systems in that way. So think about the sorts of activities you could do with these little microcomputers um, in your own classroom.